As you can see, I've been busy putting this together, uh, the Vega uh, mana block for all the, the water distribution. Uh, obviously hot side here, cold side over here. Um, I have a red here and a red here just to save uh, money uh, and not run out and buy more blue packs. Um, I just stuck with the red. I've got very, very little uh, packs left over, so very little waste, which is great. Um, there's no, as far as function is concerned, there's no difference between the blue, the white, uh, the red. It doesn't matter. Um, so it, it's just a color differential, just so you know, hot and cold. Um, so this is a cold line, actually, that's going to be running to um, the outdoor faucet, the Silcock, over there. And then this one down the bottom here actually runs to the other outdoor uh, Silcock uh, behind me. So uh, the nice thing is they'll be marked anyway. So again, um, makes no difference. Uh, I talked to the homeowner about it and just said, hey, do you care uh, if your cold water lines are red? He did not. He was happy to save the money. So we just went with that. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the mana block itself and it's made by a company called Vega. Um, they have come to our program before. Uh, they do a lot with ProPress, and um, they've got these handy dandy little pieces here that uh, come with the mana block, and I'm gonna show you how to use those. These are, uh, a specialty tool is needed for these. We have the PEX crimper, which we've uh, talked about before. Uh, I use that to do a lot of these here, uh, you can see it's a little copper ring that uh, crimps down over these uh, brass 90s and whatnot, uh, just to try to keep that as neat as possible. This side sw swooped right in, it was nice. Um, yeah, so this one has a little yellow tab on it, and uh, that signifies that this is half inch. There's also a green dot with a hole underneath here, and what they did here was, um, you know, if you haven't soldered a pipe correctly or something, a lot of times it'll leak. Um, and if you haven't crimped this, it'll leak. But sometimes it has just enough pressure when you're doing a test that it doesn't, um, that it wouldn't break off. So you could walk away from a job and think everything's fine. And then later on, oh, it's leaking. What they've done is they've put these little uh, test holes on there. So as soon as you run water through that, it will leak uh, unless it's been crimped. So kind of, a, kind of a nifty little design. And again, that's by Vega. Um, they actually started out as a company, I believe it was in Germany, and uh, they made beer taps, I think in the 1800s, and uh, now they're, they're making uh, pro press and uh, mega press and things of that, uh, that nature. So um, this has been holding me up though. We actually have uh, an inspection scheduled for uh, Monday at 10 a.m. Today is, what is today? Thursday, my goodness, the days are all blending together now uh, in quarantine here. Um, so yeah, um, today's Thursday, so um, what I have left right now is I need to button all these up. Um, some days you kind of spend your day spinning your wheels just getting parts together. It's, uh, I don't know, 1230 I think right now. Um, I got here uh, probably around 8 o'clock. Um, I had put the feelers out to um, a, a few people because I've been waiting for uh, the mega press or the, the uh, pro press head to come in that is a specialty part to these um, and it's been taking a while to be on order uh, I had reached out to um, my contact at Vega a woman named Erica and she had suggested that some of the supply houses may actually rent one so I reached out to um, uh, our, my contact uh, Scott McIntyre over at uh, FW Webb in South Portland and he said, yes, they have one. Um, this is it right here. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot like the, the PEX crimper. Uh, this ratchets, and again, that's to go on to these stainless steel parts here. So this has been holding us up in order to, to get an inspection because I can't pressurize these lines until all this is uh, buttoned up. Plus, I also had to get uh, some test balls. They inflate and go inside all our PVC pipe um, to to pressurize that system and, and, uh, and get that tested as well. So I have all the pieces here today. I'm gonna finish this up and uh, 
come Monday, we're gonna find out if I did this right or not. So <laughs> fingers crossed, I'm pretty sure it's good, but you know, no matter how many times you do this, something can be missed, um, something didn't glue right. I mean, it's been cold here. I'm pretty sure everything glued fine, but you know, this is what uh, these, these are for. So, and again, I'm gonna pressurize all this before, um, before the inspector even comes. So if it's not holding or something's wrong, I'll make those repairs before I waste the inspector's time. As I said, I think in a previous video, they only wanna come out, um, especially because of COVID-19 right now, uh, they only want to come out once to do the rough-in inspection. So they want to check the building, they want to check the electrical, and they want to check the plumbing all at the same time. They don't want to have to keep coming back one after another after another and kind of exposing themselves to, uh, to, you know, to potential infections. So I want to make sure that you know, they're, they're protected and uh, not wasting their time because you definitely don't want a ticked-off inspector checking over your work. Uh, so I'm going to show you how this goes. Um, Specialty tool, as I said, it ratchets. Then you've got your piece. It fits right down inside there. You wanna make sure it's centered. Uh, there's kind of a, a little lip on that. So you just want that. You wanna make sure you're not on that lip. You're centered in that lip. It kind of sets in there and, uh, and holds it in place. And then I will crimp these and ratchet it down. I'm not gonna do it on this piece. I'll show you on these back here, uh, just in case I end up needing an extra. So, We'll start right here. One thing I do want to make sure that nothing has moved, so I'm still nice and tight in there. And then I just get that on and get it done. And this will release on its own. And there it is. So if this doesn't release on its own, if you have to click it down, there's an emergency release right here in the middle. If you have to undo that emergency release for any reason, this is not crimped right. So now that we're in, that's nice and tight, and we're ready to do the rest of them. These two here are not in use. I'm just gonna close those, and I'm gonna, I haven't picked them up yet, but I'm just gonna cap them. I don't really need to. I mean, these, these will hold. These are the two uh, isolation valves that, that this is good for, uh, but I'm gonna cap them anyway, just for whatever, just in case that seal ever goes. It's right there, we won't have any drips. You know, I don't know how often the homeowner is gonna be coming down here, so just a little extra. All right, so I'm gonna go through all these. I'm gonna make sure each one of these is still in. I'm gonna crimp it, and this will be tight. Then I've gotta come up here, and uh, this is gonna be my hot water intake that goes over to my boiler. Um, for today, I'm just gonna come up, and I'm gonna, I bought a plug, and I'm just gonna plug that so that I can pressurize this whole system, and then, um, I'll start tying into the hot water side of this. Okay, um, so here we go. So one thing I forgot to mention as we were talking about these fittings, um, the PEX doesn't just go inside this uh, stainless steel ring here and then get crimped. Um, I don't know if it shows on the video, but if you look inside there, there's another plastic bit. So that pit, that bit, excuse me, uh, slides inside the PEX pipe and then the stainless steel ring goes on the outer edge of that. So um, this center piece here, uh, inside the pipe keeps that pipe from collapsing uh, because you would definitely lose the seal uh, if you if the, the pipe were to collapse so just a little little something to mention um, as I was going through you probably also saw um, that the tool did not fit in between these so I had to take every one off every other one off and just tighten those these are all finger tight there's a gasket um, inside here uh, and that slides inside these tubes here 
and that makes the seal. So these I'm just going to get nice and tight. I'm going to go through and just make sure right now they're all just finger tight. Um, I'm going to go through and just give them, excuse me, just give them a quick little little quarter turn on each just to make sure you know they're nice and tight. I don't want to over tighten those because you, then you run the risk of breaking the threads. Um, sometimes if, if you've got a gasket or whatnot uh, and you over tighten something, it's counterproductive. You think the tighter it is, the better seal you're going to get, but it actually can start leaking. Uh, you can pinch those gaskets, uh, break the threads, uh, break this plastic uh, female part that goes over. There's any number of things. So again, not too tight. And I'm going to close these two. Uh, there's this right here, which is still attached. There we go. That just pops on. So this is the little key that fits on here. And I'll turn those so they are in the, actually, yeah, the, that is the off position. So these are all in the off position. So I'm actually going to turn these on because I want this to fully pressurize each line and make sure that we don't have any leaks. I'd rather find out now when I pressurize it than um, having forgotten to, to open one of these. So as the arrow, if the arrow is with the pipe, then it's open. If it's against it, it's closed. That goes a lot for um, ball valves and things as well. If, if the handle is going with the pipe, then it's open. If the uh, handle is going crosswise to the pipe, it is, uh, then it means that the valve is closed. Just a little something to, to think about as you go through. Oops. Um, so when I'm done with this, I'm going to make sure I put, put it right back here just so we always know where it is. I'm going to go through and, and do the same thing to, to the uh, cold side as well. And this will be buttoned up and that will be that. So anyway, that's the mana block just to give you an idea. So before I sign completely off, I just want to uh, make sure I've covered everything. Um, as I was going along, I kind of rethink a few things. So you'll notice I haven't used any thread tape or any uh, thread sealer uh, pipe dope on, on any of these threads. Uh, because of the O-ring inside of here, I, uh, it doesn't need it, but there's also uh, specifications on this tag here and the unit itself has some uh, literature on it and it just says uh, don't use those things. Uh, it can affect the integrity of the seal. The whole, the whole uh, system is designed around these specialty fittings and the O-ring that's in there. So if I use any sort of a solvent, um, uh, the wrong kind of sealer, any sort of thing on these threads and that gets into there, it can uh, corrode that O-ring. And so even though, yes, I've got extra sealant on there, the O-ring is really the important part of this, uh, this design. So if you notice that um, I don't have anything on there, there was a specific reason why I didn't forget. It's not supposed to be there. So. Um, I'm going to come back through. As I said, I'm just going to take a pair of, uh, of channel locks and just give them a quick little little quarter turn just to make sure they're, they're sealed right. And this will be good more than likely forever. Um, and now, oh yeah, and I'm also going to uh, cap up top here so I can pressurize the system. This is a cap here, uh, if you can see that. And because um, if you come in, you can either come in from the bottom or the top on both sides, uh, just the way this was. I came in from the bottom. I may have mentioned this before, I apologize. Um, I'm doing these videos uh, sometimes out of sequence. I think I have about six running right now, uh, and I haven't been back to this in about two or three days. So, um, so if I've mentioned this before, I apologize. It's just a refresher for you. Um, come in from the bottom, not the top. Hot water only has one inlet and it's right here. There is no outlet for the hot water other than these. So um, it's all nice and tight right now. I've gone through and I've done all these and we should be set for our inspection come Monday. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, if the inspector is okay with it, I'm gonna see what I can do about um, having him uh, allow me to, to film it. If not, then we'll just talk about it. I'll talk about it afterwards here, but pretty excited. Um, you know, it's, it's always a little nerve wracking. Did I miss anything and, and whatnot? Um, but I'm pretty confident we're gonna pass with flying colors, but we'll see. As I said, things get, things get missed sometimes. So anyway, I hope you're all doing well still, 
and I will see you on the next video. Have a great day.